Well hi there everyone, Farm Sim Gamer here and welcome to my map review and tour of Land Down Under, another fantastic map by Kaz64, who I know has been supported a lot by Old Aussie Gamer, aka Perrin. Um, I know I know Kaz has dedicated this map to uh, Perrin because of the amount of support that he's given him. Now, um, when you load into the map, Kaz has also kind of made thanks to a number of other people that have supported him as well, um, specifically Old Timer Dave and Outlaw Buck, the latter of which I know has done endless testing over the last few months so big thanks to all of them uh, for helping uh, Kaz bring this uh, map to us because um, I know that we're going to have hours and hours and hours of fun um, playing this one um, now uh, this is a 16x map um, so I'm not going to be able to cover everything without having a very long video so what I'm going to do I'm just going to talk briefly about the mods uh, that the map supports. I'll cover off some of the basic points like the number of fields and their sizes. We'll take a look at the map, um, the start positions for all three modes and what you get. We'll do a quick tour of the farm, uh, take a look at the menu, selling points, buy points and additional crop types. And then I'll finish off by doing a little fly around the map and looking at some of the special features. So first things first, um, you'll need Global Company installed in order for everything to operate properly. Um, the map is Maze Plus and Maze Plus Forage Extension ready, um, although not CCM or the Horse Extension. It's Seasons ready, Precision Farming ready with a custom soil map, um, and uh, you could use course play on it, although I know that there will be some issues, particularly with Field 49 um, uh, because of its irregularity and Field 17 because of its size. Now I've mentioned precision farming, now you, um, it's probably important to be aware that people are having a few issues with it I think, uh, particularly around harvest contracts. Now because you're not fertilising or liming um, fields that you don't own, um, the um, yield potential of those fields is often quite low because it hasn't had any lime or fertiliser. As a result of that I think people are finding that when they come to do harvest contracts they're unable to complete those contracts because the yield potential is so low. Um, so just be mindful of that because it will be a problem I think on the this map um, as well as you know, you know others that you might play and if you're reliant on harvest contracts then um, uh, and getting income from those then of course that will be a problem so the map has 106 fields in total. Field 71 uh, is the smallest at 5.6 acres and field 17 is the largest at a massive 4,899 acres. Now that's land area uh, but the field size of field 17 is still 4,500 acres which is absolutely huge. Um, and for those of you that may have played uh, Kazi's Wild West map that's twice the size of field 17 from that map. Now both the shop and the animal stockyard have opening and closing hours. Uh, the main shop is 8am to 9pm and the animal stockyard is 9am to 8pm. Uh, so outside of those shop hours uh, you will not be able to access your garage or access the shop to purchase anything. Now there are uh, three small plots that are just houses with a single field that you can buy if you want to do a small farm startup. Uh, they are fields 22, 23 and 71 and cost between 60 and $70,000. And I'm kind of guessing you could place a, a, a sleep trigger at the houses as well as long as you've got the global company place anywhere um, uh, setting checked. The hedges do have collisions, although there is one place on the main farm that doesn't. You'll have to see if you can find where that is. There are also uh, plenty of placeable areas of different sizes scattered around the map uh, so you can set up your own farms or place factories. Um, perfect for multiplayer as well so uh, individual players can set up their own farms um, and one of those placeable areas is next to the main farm so um, good opportunity for you to be able to expand there if you choose to. And generally there's some fantastic attention to detail right the way throughout the map. Houses under construction, there are fish and ducks in the waterways and the lakes and the ponds. Um, there's even a little uh, dinghy charging around on one of the rivers which is great. And uh, new grass textures as well with all these little flowers and everything which is um, uh, uh, fantastic. And then you've got Pig Island as well uh, where you've got some pigs or hogs that um, are kind of stuck on one of these islands. Now I would say um, if you're playing Seasons those uh, pigs will die because you're unable to actually feed them so uh, just be mindful of that if you're going to play seasons 
Okay, so let's take a quick look at the map. Uh, now I'm going to focus on the main central area at the moment, and as you can see, there's kind of a road network uh, that defines this central section. Now, just to put that into perspective, um, as I've said before, the map is a 16x map. Um, so this area here is roughly 25% of the actual map. So that's a 4x map in its own right. Um, so a pretty big area, and as you can see, there's a very big range of fields that are available of all sorts of different sizes. Um, uh, now, just to point out a kind of couple of key things, you can see the shop over here um, that's on the uh, left-hand side of that central area. Um, those uh, small plots that I mentioned before, 22, 23 and 71, are located towards the right-hand side. The animal dealership is kind of just uh, slightly down from uh, from the shop itself, um, and the main farm is located um, roughly in the middle of that uh, that space, that area. Um, so pretty uh, a, a pretty big area, and as you can see, the majority of the buy points and the selling points are all located within this kind of uh, central quarter of uh, of the map within the ring road. And if I just kind of scroll out a little bit. Uh, you'll see that there's very few that are outside of this central area. Uh, we've got the sawmill up here, um, just adjacent to field 46, and just below a large area of forestry that's up here. And then we've kind of got the, um, uh, the port and the diesel cells that are right at the top of the map. And then around the outside of the map, in the rest of the space, you can see are all uh, kind of the larger fields that you've got available, including this field 17, which goes all the way down the right hand side. Um, and again, just to put that into perspective, that field 17 is roughly 30% of the total map. You can see it's absolutely huge. Uh, now down the bottom, you can spot a couple of uh, special things here. There is a little racetrack, and I'll come on to that later. And there's also a lime and fertilizer mine uh, that you can purchase and you can mine those for the products that are in there and take them off to the uh, selling points or use them on your farms themselves. Now just having a quick look at some of the prices um, now the smallest field I think I said was field 71 here uh, so just under um, uh, $57,000 and only 5.6 acres. As you can see, field 17 over here, uh, 4,898 acres in terms of land size and a whopping $49.5 million to purchase. Uh, pretty huge. Um, the next biggest field, field 34 over here, uh, which is uh, just under 1,200 acres at uh, 12 million. Um, and as you can see, there are a number of other large fields that are available right the way throughout the map. So if you like big farming um, and uh, you like getting your teeth stuck into some big fields, then this is definitely a map that you should try out. Now there are a number of uh, forestry areas as well. You can see I pointed out the one that's just at the top uh, of the map between fields 44 and 45. That's the largest area. Um, there's another one uh, kind of down a little bit more centrally and just to the left-hand side of field 61. Um, you can see a blue section here as well. That's kind of a, a, a swamp area as well, which you uh, you can um, uh, you uh, get access to in terms of forestry. I'll come on to that a little bit later. There are some other sort of smaller uh, ones dotted around. Um, and another one down in the south just below field 104. Um, and as you can see in the middle of the map, um, there's a big variety of field sizes. Uh, so in order um, to develop and grow your farm, you've got plenty of options there in terms of purchasing fields. So some of them are quite small um, and uh, uh, easily accessible in terms of price. Uh, and, and obviously they gradually get sort of um, bigger and bigger. So the likes of field 68, 90, 95 and so on and so forth. So you haven't got to earn an absolute fortune in order to be able to develop and expand your farm. And you'll also notice that the uh, road network is, um, it's not just a grid system. There's lots of little uh, kind of twists and turns in the road. You've got that lovely river that kind of meanders right the way through the middle of the map. Um, and uh, the field sizes are also kind of, um, you know, uh, or field um uh, styles are also kind of quite nice and neat as well. Uh, they're not just kind of blocks of uh, blocks of land in square or rectangular shapes. There's kind of all sorts of uh, quirky little shapes to them as well. Um, and uh, when we go and take a little bit of a fly around tour of the map as well, you'll see um, that the land really is quite um, um, undulating as well. And there's various different levels uh, which create an awful lot of interest for the map itself. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the Agile farm itself. Um, now, your start position in all three modes is here at the main farm. There is only one farm on the map. Um, and uh, your starting position is pretty kind of similar right the way throughout, actually. So if you've got new farmer uh, startup mode, you get your regular $100,000. Uh, plus, um, you own the farm itself and you get fields one and two. Uh, which have a combined value of about $261,000. If you're in farm manager mode, you start here, but you don't own anything. So you don't own the farm, you don't own any fields, um, but you do get your standard $1.25 million um, as a start point in terms of bank balance. Um, now, as normal, uh, 250000 of that is uh, is a bank loan. Um, now, the farm itself only costs 89519 um, so it's not too expensive to purchase. So you'll still have quite a bit of money um, to uh, to purchase land. If you start from scratch, again, you don't own anything. You don't own any, uh, the farm, you don't own any fields, and you get your regular 500,000 as a start point. Um, now, I would say that in all three modes, you get exactly the same equipment loadout, and I'll come on to that in a little while. Um, you also get the same animal husbandries. Um, now, you don't own the land that they're on, but that's not a problem. You can still go ahead and feed all your animals without having to purchase the land that the husbandries sit on. Um, and you get the same starting animals. You get 20 chickens, 9 goats and 12 ducks. If I have a look at the equipment loadout, um, it's pretty extensive. And as I said, uh, you get the same equipment loadout in all three modes, new farmer, farm manager, and start from scratch. So uh, a pretty good start point uh, for all three modes. And because of this equipment loadout, um, farm manager actually becomes the best option to choose um, because you end up with kind of more avail um, money available in your bank balance than you would if you start in new farmer mode. So um, that would probably be the best option and it gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of the fields that you want to buy. Uh, so equipment wise we've got four tractors, the smallest being the uh, Case Puma in terms of horsepower 270 horsepower, the Fent 1050 uh, is the largest at 517, um, got another Case there on the JCB which has obviously got a high road speed which is good um, you've got the Phoenix Agri Truck, you've got the Agco Ideal 9T Combine um, the Cramper trailer, which is 59,000 litre capacity. You've got Kaz is uh, TDK 1600, which is modified to 24,000 litres capacity um, and obviously takes all of the crop types as well. Um, you've got the Yoskin um, uh, Aquatrans tank, uh, which again has been adapted to take a lot more liquids, uh, as you can see down the bottom here. So um, that's a modified version that Kaz has done. Um, you've got the Draper header, 45 foot, you've got the HS16 corn header, and uh, we've got uh, the Cruiser um, cultivator, we've got the Amazon drill, uh, the Tempo Vedastad uh, planter, lime spreader, fertilizer spreader, mower, tedder, windrower, baler, which again um, does all of the uh, straw types that they have on this map, including corn mulch, and I'll come on to that a little bit later. Um, you've got the front loader for the, um, it goes on the case Puma. Um, uh, with buckets, um, pallet forks and the bale spike, a couple of weights and then all of the animal husbandries. Now these are modded versions um, but they are available in the shop for you to be able to purchase so um, don't worry about that if you are setting up your own farm then all of these will be available if you choose to get them including the uh, multi-fruit silo um, and the ranch shop um, and both of these uh, these sheds as well so as you can see pretty extensive um, uh, loadout of equipment um, obviously the farm uh, the farmhouse itself as well the ranch um, which you may remember uh, I've seen on a, a couple of other um, Kaz's maps as well I think um, particularly rustic acres I know it's there um, so very good uh, equipment layout and uh, very good starting point for you now if you obviously if you don't like some of that equipment you can of course sell it and buy whatever you want Okay, so let's have a little look around the farm itself. Um, now, your start point, as I said beforehand, is inside the actual house or just outside the uh, the front door. Um, you can go in the house, and if you go upstairs, that's where the sleep trigger is. Now, some of you may recognise this from some of Kaz's other maps, um, I think particularly the likes of Rustic Acres. Um, just off to the left-hand side, we've got the, uh, the garage um, there. Those doors uh, open up so you can park your vehicles inside. Um, and uh, then over on the right-hand side, we've got our chicken pen as well. And like I said, you start with 20 chickens um turn around just sort of uh, kind of in the middle of the yard area we've got a big open plan uh undercover shed um that's got the truck in it uh, the two headers and the combine the um uh the main silo is located across the other side of the yard and that holds a very large nine and a half million litres um, 
uh, of crop uh, so plenty of uh, plenty of space in that and then we've got uh, another large um, kind of uh, open open plan shed here um, where most of your um, machinery is uh, is kind of located now nice and tall as well so plenty of space to be able to get uh, the likes of the combines in and, and, uh, and items like that um, a big open yard as you can see so you've got plenty of space if you want to add some additional buildings into uh, into here now if we have a little wander over the bridge here that goes over one of the roads um, we'll come to that uh, placeable area that I mentioned er uh, earlier so there's plenty of space here if you want to be able to expand the farm uh, particularly if you want to add any additional as as um, animal husbandries um, uh, cows are a big business over in Australia I think they are the second largest exporter of beef in the world um, so if you're into your cows then you've got plenty of space here to be able to add um, some ad additional uh, additional barns um, now I'm going to pop up in the air um, just for the next bit just to um, wander down um, over the track here and just so we can have a look at all the animal husbandries because they are kind of quite well spaced out um, so first up we've got goats down below us there that's where um, the uh, number of goats that you start with uh, are located there likewise with the ducks that are next up um, so they're located just over here um, and as you can see there are a number of um, small fields uh, so the ducks just down below us there are a number of small fields that we've got that just kind of go around the animal husbandry areas uh, just off on the side here we've got the main pig uh, pig yard uh, so nice and big big capacity there as well and then if we travel a little bit further we'll also come to the second goat barn um, uh, now all the grass areas that you see in between the fields you can cut these quite easily um, so uh, if you've got straw and hay that you need then uh, you, uh, as long as you own the lands then you can cut all the grass down uh, so this is the second um, goat area the goat barn the main one um, so that has a bigger capacity than the uh, small goat husbandry um, and just uh, beyond this other field here this is the sheep pen again quite large good capacity as well um, and then just at the end here we've got uh, our cow shed uh, again this is a modded uh, version but nice and large uh, big capacity for this as well and then just off to the side um, we've got our small calf pen uh, which I know you'll be familiar with from some of others uh, Kaz's maps as well the likes of Wild West and uh, Rustic Acres etc so uh, uh, nice, nice and spread out, um, plenty of space, um, and I guess if you wanted to, um, you could convert some of these fields if you wanted to put some additional um, animal pens here as well. Now, like I said beforehand, you don't own any of the land that's actually here. Um, that doesn't stop you from feeding any of the animals, um, but you would need to purchase the fields if you want to um, start cutting up uh, uh, the grass or converting these fields into um, other animal husbandry areas. So next up, let's have a little look at the uh, selling points. And as you can see, there are an awful lot that are available. I think for your standard crops, there's about eight to 10 um, different selling points um, that are available. And as I mentioned beforehand, the majority of them are all located in the central part of the map. Um, and as you can see, there's an awful lot of prod products that you can um, sell as well. And that includes the likes of TMR, straw pellets, hay pellets, diesel, um, and so on and so forth so there's an awful lot that you can get your teeth stuck into basically on here now I'm not going to go around every single one of them um, I'm not going to uh, show you every single one of them I think it's nice to be able to explore things yourself but there are a few that I will highlight specifically um, now first up um, is the animal dealership now here you can buy all your animal foods um, but uh, not only that you can also sell quite a lot of the animal uh, foods as well and that also includes the likes of um, hay pellets, straw pellets, uh, TMR, pig food, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to get into making some of those, um, then you can start selling those at the animal dealership for some profit. Now next up is uh, bale sales. Um, you can see just by field 68 here. Um, now again, not only can you sell all of your kind of straw uh, products here, but you can also purchase quite a lot as well. Um, and uh, there's more than kind of just the basic straw stuff. So there's the likes of um, alfalfa, clover soybeans whole crop silage whole crop fresh corn stalks clover hay um, everything else so um, there's a big uh, uh, list of items that you can purchase from this location and then just up the road from Fair Dinkum Wool by Field 94, we also have the old church, six feet under. Um, here you can purchase uh, lime, fertiliser and compost. Now there's a few interesting uh, features around that church as well, so uh, go and have a good look around there. Um, and then last but not least, um, this is Abbo's Garden Supply. Um, now here you can sell uh, compost. 
lime and fertilizer so if you're planning on doing a bit of mining up in those hills um, then this is where you could bring your lime and fertilizer um, off to sell it I'm just going to go back to the map and also look at the different crop of fruit types. Um, so you get all the standard crop types, obviously, from wheat right the way down through to sugarcane, as you would expect. Um, in addition, you get carrot here on uh, page one. And then on the second page, um, we also get the likes of onion, clover, lettuce, red cabbage, rye, poppy, hops, tobacco, hemp, coffee, rice, mustard, alfalfa. Now, if you've played other uh, maps from CAS64, then you will be familiar with um, a lot of those crops because he includes them on most of his maps um, unique to uh, land down under are also red grape and white grape um, now if we have a look at the map there are two locations where um, uh, we have these uh, one is just uh, below field 48 up here um, just outside the kind of main central area and then the other one is down um, nestled between fields 79 and 80 um, now I'll go and have a look at those in a minute because um, uh, like most fields you have to purchase those um, specifically but they are fenced off and you do need to buy the land before you can actually get inside them. Now before we go and have a look at the grapes there's one other product that I want to touch on and that's cane mulch. Um, so basically you're collecting the straw from the sugar cane and that's being converted into a, a straw swath as you can see um, and uh, uh, then is baleable. Um, now there's a modded version of a fent combine and a modded version of um, uh, the corn head uh, that enables you to be able to do this and I'll just uh, show you where they are in the shop menu. So if we go into vehicles and sugarcane technology, then you'll see uh, the ideal sugarcane combine has been added um, and then also the HS16 sugarcane corn header. Um, so you will need both of those uh, in order to be able to um, uh, combine the sugarcane and obviously create that straw swath for baling. And to my knowledge, that modified combine also fits the regular headers as well. So um, you should only need just the one, uh, the one combine. And the standard balers that are available in the shop menu and the one that you get as part of your equipment loadout um, do have uh, cane mulch added as a, as a product that you can bale. Now I mentioned before uh, that one of the forestry areas also has a sort of a swamp region to it. Um, so just over by fields 24 and 25, which is kind of in the um, uh, the top uh, uh, right-hand section of the central area of the map, um, you will find this swamp area here. Um, so this is it, um, and you will need to have a modified uh, scorpion king in order to be able to come in here and cut these trees down. Um, so if we go into the shop menu in forestry machines, if you scroll over, right to the very end you will see there's a land down under uh, scorpion king um, modified version that you will need in order to be able to uh, cut those trees down in that swamp area now you will notice that there are some dark patches in the water now that's compost so you can come down here dig that up and take it off to uh, a couple of selling points see the abo's garden supply or the gills manure place that's just down the road you do of course need to own the land to be able to do that Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a fly around the map. I'm uh, not going to go and visit every single place because that would take a long time. Um, so we're here at the main farm. Um, and just to kind of get your bearings, um, now I don't know if you've noticed, but the southern port is at the top of the map. Um, so things are um, a little bit upside down from that perspective in terms of... Um, uh, being north, south, east and west. Uh, so uh, south is off in that direction, the southern port's just over there um, and I'm going to head off in this direction um, and we're just going to have a little look at the BGA. Um, so I'm just going to head out over the uh, husbandries here and uh, you can see as well down below us that quite a lot of these fields are nice and kind of undulating. Um, it's certainly not uh, a flat piece of land or anything else like that at all so it's got a lot of character to it. Right here's the BGA, uh, walkabout BGA um, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of space here. Uh, Digestate is just over there. The um, drop-off point for the BGA is right in front of us where those domes are. Um, quite a lot of space here to be able to kind of add some additional buildings um, or bunker silos or whatever it might be. Um, now with most BGAs, you do of course need to own them, um, but there are quite a lot of products that you can um, uh, sell here as well. So once you own it, um, there's quite a lot of stuff that you can kind of bring up here and you can go through the menu and see what uh, what is available. Um, so from here I'm just going to head uh, back down um, the map, uh, sort of in a northerly direction then. Um, I'm going to follow the river down. Uh, this field of poppies looks withered. Um, to try and sort that out at some point. One of the selling points just there. I'm going to drop down and follow um, the river a little bit just down here. 
and this will lead us to the shop there's that dinghy going backwards and forwards up and down the river uh, that just charges about all day um, so as we come down to here uh, that pig island or hog island um, is just here right in the middle here as you can see there's the uh, there's the pigs they obviously escaped uh, from the animal stockyard at some point made their way over here um, haven't figured out a way if you can actually rescue these um, pigs at all but like I said if you're playing in seasons you won't be able to feed them at the moment and they will die off unfortunately uh, right the shop is just off to one side here um, the actual shop itself is on the left hand side the workshop is kind of there in the middle and over to the right a nice display of machinery out in the forecourt here as well which is really nice um, if we just venture up here as well uh, we will come to the animal stockyard and then just off to the side here is that selling point that I mentioned that's where you can sell your animal food and then just directly in front of us that's where you can buy a lot of your animal food as well uh, BB Garris just off to one side there as well where you can get some fuel um, right now I'm just going to follow the river just a little bit further north um, there's a couple of other uh, cell points here some residential areas um, KFC is one of the cell points that's just down there below us um, and just over um, the top of these buildings as well is that Abo's garden supply uh, place that I showed you a little bit earlier as well where you can sell your lime fertilizer and compost that's just down there right if we just venture off over the fields Again, you can kind of see how nice and undulating these are. I think a lot, a lot of character. I think when you're flying around, it kind of does look a bit flat. But actually, when you get down here, you can see that it, uh, it certainly isn't. Um, now, here we are at a couple of these um, vineyard areas. Um, now, like I said, you have to purchase these like you would with any field, um, but you can't gain access to it. You can't open those gates unless you do own the vineyards themselves. Um, now, I have purchased them. Um, and you will also see just off to one side that there is a uh, class grape harvester as well. So let me just pop down. I'll just show you in the um, shop menu where that is. So if you just go to harvesters, uh, scroll around right towards the end, then the class grape harvester uh, is here. There are a couple of things that you can change. Engine size uh, you can amend. Um, and then you can also change uh, the wheels on it as well. Uh, rim colour and main colour, you can also make some adjustments on if you choose to do that. So I have uh, purchased a, um, the land here. And uh, so hopefully I'll be able to open these gates up. And we'll jump in the harvester and go and see if we can just harvest some of these grapes. out the back so the trees remain in place but the grapes get harvested that's really cool I like that and one other thing I should mention is that you can also plant the grapes um, with a regular cedar or drill um, so if you want to convert some of your other fields into um, vineyards um, then you can do that so you've got more than just the two sets of vineyards that are available in the map at the moment very good um, and you can see just over the side there there's a little shed as well where you can park your harvester up um, and everything else right we'll leave that there just turn that off I'll jump out um, and then we'll carry on heading um, a bit further north uh, and we'll come to where the mine and um, the racetrack are so they're just heading off in this direction there's another cell point down here that you can see that's the boo uh, booze flat uh, mill um, and that lovely waterfall that's um, just up in the hills near now there is something interesting up here um, I'm not going to say what it is but uh, I'll leave you to um, have a little look around see if you can find that but uh, I think that's really fantastic it's so picturesque it's really really nice um, now if we just venture off around the side here as well now this is the access point down to those mines um, you can have a another little bit of detail that's just off on the side here. You can see there's been a landslide here. Obviously a bit of rain that's caused that to slide down there. And two of those houses have uh, kind of uh, got wiped out with the mud and the rocks and everything else like that. So um, 
that's uh, an interesting little feature as well. Um, now if we follow this track here, uh, what we will do is we will find the access through to those mines. Um, now this is the only route into these, uh, you've got to go right the way round um, over the top and follow the track round and down into the mines um, in order to be able to um, uh, do the work down there uh, and everything else. So you can't get through at the top here, you've got to go right the way round and then go um, down and all the way round these uh, elements to be able to kind of get down to the actual mine areas themselves which are down here. Um, now uh, as you'd expect you do have to own these pieces of land as you can see by the little mini map in the corner um, there's a section for lime and a section for fertilizer. You can buy those separately um, but you do need to purchase them in order to be able to um, uh, mine and uh, gather the product that's in here. Now next up is the racetrack which is just off to the west of the mine um, and as you can see it's pretty big actually. Uh, I think you can have a lot of fun down here especially if you're playing in multiplayer mode um, and uh, the uh, track itself does have dynamic mud so if you drive too quickly then you can spin off. Now last but not least, Field 17, 4,898 acres of land area, 4,533 acres of actual field size. If we look in this direction, that's about 30% of the width of the map. You can see the hills off there in the distance. And if we look in the other way, it's the full length of the map um, in the other direction. Absolutely huge field, massive challenge. So if you like big farming, you like big fields, then this map is a definite for you. So that's it for the map tour. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting and informative. They haven't been able to cover every single bit of detail, but hopefully I've given you enough of an insight to want to download it and explore the map yourself. So thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, then please hit that subscribe button uh, and don't forget to turn on that notification bell and feel free to like, share and comment. So whatever you're doing, wherever you are, take care, stay safe and I'll catch you on the farm next time. Bye for now.